Today I'm going to show you how I made a shot go from looking like this to this in Final Cut Pro. And uh, we're going to use a little bit of plugins and some keyframes, but it's going to be good. I just want to start this video off by saying a huge thank you for all of you that are here watching the videos and enjoying the content that I got rolling here on the channel. And also, if you hear a lot of like creaking noises and uh, oh, noise in the background, it's because they are fixing the roof on the building that I'm having my studio in. So I apologize for that right now. I will also say that if this is your first time watching me, hey, hope everything's good. And uh, if you aren't following me on Instagram, you should definitely head over there because there's a lot of good behind the scenes stuff that I post on my Insta stories. All right, so one of the things that I tend to use a whole lot when I'm doing my videos, maybe B-rolls, maybe higher end productions or whatever kind of videos that I make is a couple of effects and keyframes, but it like you have to be very subtle with what kind of effects that you use and how much you are keyframing. But if you do those things right, it can definitely enhance the video and make it look way more interesting and professional than it otherwise would have been if you just included the shot as is. When me and Oscar went out to shoot the epic gardening b-roll, we actually wanted to have the sun like glowing in the background, but when we were shooting it, it kind of didn't look as good as we wanted to, so I definitely had to add that into post. And we also adjusted some of the shots with keyframes and made a little bit of shakes here and there to make it look more interesting. And that is exactly what I'm going to show you uh, how I did in this video. So let's jump into Final Cut Pro. And looking at the shot as is, you can see that the camera is going back, reveals Oscar's face, and then he raises the gun. It is a very interesting shot as is because there's a lot of things going on. And I was also using the rule of thirds to frame everything in the way that I want to. But the thing that was lacking was kind of like the sun flare in the background and also a little bit of vertigo feeling to give it a bit more depth. And also I wanted it to be felt when Oscar was spraying the water gun. So the first thing that I will do with this clip is obviously color grade it because right now it kind of looks flat and uh, doesn't really give us this uh, creative feeling that we want to have. And to color grade this, I'm going to go into my LUTs and I'm going to use my base grade cinematic LUTs because this kind of gives us a very good base feeling of how the shot is going to turn out with additional grading, but it doesn't overdo the entire grading and uh, oh, everything else. And what I want to do then is that I want to add in a sun flare to this to make sure that we have this really epic feeling. So I'm going to go to M Flare 2 and I am going to choose the warm studio light because I think that this looks insanely good when you try to fake the sun and definitely gives your shot a um, very glowy epic feeling when you uh, add it on. And then we're going to go into the effects panel and I'm going to drag this a little bit more towards the orangey red style. Not too much red, but I think somewhere there should be good. And then we're gonna go to the post effects and we're gonna increase the saturation ever so slightly, not too much. And then we can adjust it back. There we go. So what I'm gonna do now is that I wanna choose the sun flare and place it on top of the sun and then choose tracker and then hit track. Make sure that you do this from the beginning because then it tracks the footage all the way from the beginning. And uh, now we just wait. And once the tracking is done, you can see that the sun flare is almost perfectly tracked to the sun. The only thing that we're gonna do is just move it ever so slightly so that is exactly on top of the big bulb that is the sun. And now playing it back. Ooh, look at that flare. Move it a little bit, there we go. And this is what it looks like before and after. So we definitely have that depth into it, but it also looks a little bit washed out. So we're gonna go into the advanced and then we're gonna check the generate alpha. There we go. So now we just have a little bit of extra oomph from the sun, but it doesn't take over the entire shot. There we go. Yeah. And another cool thing that you can do with this plugin is that you can move the aberration. So we're gonna move it just slightly out of frame 
so that it moves out of frame when Oscar is coming into frame. I think that that looks pretty good. And as Oscar is pressing the, what do you say, water gun, always lose the word of that, we want to have a little bit of a shake, like brrr. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to do go to the plugin M glitch and drag it over to the clip. And then we're going to go down to shake. And we want to keyframe just as the first like water droplets come out of the water gun. And I'm gonna choose keyframe here and then move forward two shots. See there and just increase it to like 1.16 and try to play it back, see how it looks. Oh, that's good. And we're also gonna add in a little bit of vertical vibration as well. So we're gonna keyframe that too move forward and set that to like 0 0.58. I think that that's going to be pretty good. Oh, that looks good. Ah, and now that we have both the sun flare and the shake, what I want to do then is that I want to keyframe this a little bit so that it gives us a little bit of vertigo. So I'm gonna to go to the beginning of the clip and I'm gonna set a keyframe and write 115 on the scale and then go to the end of the clip and then go to the scale again and set it to 100. So playing this back, it gives us an ever so slightly more like movement off the camera, but it looks really damn good. And now that I have the sun, we have the scaling of the keyframes, and then also the shake, I want to finish up with a little bit of like fine touches to the color grading. So I'm going to go to Color from the Pro, and we're going to drag it over to the clip. And here we are going to go into the effects, and then we're going to choose the layers. And I am going to choose the color wheels that you can see right here. And then we're going to drag down the saturation in the shadows a little bit. And we are going to up the midtones and then increase the saturation in the midtones ever so slightly. And then in the highlights, we're going to drag it up to 100 and increase the saturation there. And now we are going to jump into the curves and just do a slight S curve go doesn't even have to be much and lift the shadows just a little bit and look at it before and after bam you can see that we got a lot more <laughs> into the shot and now we're just gonna go back up to the flare and we're gonna drag down the saturation so it doesn't take the overhand and you know what we can actually finish this up by going into layers and then adding in an HSL curves and then choose the blue let's see here and we're gonna drag this down a little bit and go into the hue versus sat do the same thing choose the blue and we're gonna crunch this up so it really really pops off in the water beam and here is the final result <music> So I really hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did please do give it a thumbs up because that would be highly appreciated and if you haven't subscribed make sure to do that as well I'm gonna drop a link down below to all the plugins that I used in this video as same as my LUTs if you want to go and buy those highly recommend them they are really good for those of you shooting with the Sony a7s3 especially the base grade pack all right have a good one Peter France Wilden saying goodbye take care